Lost in a multitude of numbers, graphs, and charts? No time to understand the effect of data, such as GDP, inflation, income statements, and cash flow on your investments? Unsure about what's happening to the economy? Don't know the good places to invest? Risk on with equities or risk off with fixed income? Investing nowadays can be overwhelming. There are so many terms to learn and so much data to analyze amidst a sea of investment opportunities. The Atrium Global Allocation Feeder Fund is designed to do exactly that. The fund is invested in both equities and fixed, combining the best ideas across the full spectrum of asset classes. Investing in equities that offer potential outperformance while using fixed income to protect against the downside. Historically delivering more of the upside of global stocks compared to the downside. Flexible and diversified. It seeks the most attractive investment opportunities that give long-term growth while managing volatility. Portfolio managers and analysts will help you navigate across the sea of numbers, graphs, and charts to find you the most attractive investment opportunities while you can sit back and relax. All this conveniently available whether you invest in Philippine peso or US dollars. Invest in a fund that gives you competitive returns with less risk. Invest in the Atram Global Allocation Feeder Fund. For more information, visit www.atram.com.ph. Hello and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining this week's episode of Atram Webinar Series. I am Kyla Torres, Investment Fund Specialist and your host for today. Whether you're looking to strengthen your portfolio by way of diversification or create new opportunities for growth, investing globally can be an exceptional element in your overall investment strategy. In today's episode, we'll tackle why investors should consider investing in global markets, as well as how investing globally could help in wealth creation. If you have questions, you may send them as early as now by clicking on the Q&A button below your screen. Now, before we begin, I'd like to let you know that this session will be recorded and that copies will be disseminated as well as posted on our social media platforms. Also, please don't forget to visit our website, www.atram.com.ph, for more detailed information about all the funds that we offer. If you have any friends who think would like this webinar but are unable to attend, feel free to share the YouTube replay of this session and visit our YouTube channel, Atram Studio. Scan the QR code to visit our official social media pages. <clears throat> we would like to invite you to join Atram's official Viber community group, hashtag AtramPH community, to stay updated on the latest announcements, advisories, and reminders. Scan the QR code or visit the link on your screen and get a chance to win Atram merchandise. We would like to make this webinar as interactive as possible, so please don't hesitate to send your questions in the Q&A tab all throughout the webinar. Each question you send is a raffle entry for a chance to win limited Atram merchandise. Winners will be announced at the end of the webinar, so make sure to stay until the end. We will also be wrapping up with a quick feedback survey after the webinar, so we do hope you can share your thoughts with us about our session today and how we can further improve our webinar series. So without further ado, let me briefly introduce our speaker this morning, Tarina Kuo. Tarina is a member of the Southeast Asia Client Business Team. The team is dedicated to the development of BlackRock's distribution efforts and client relationships management in Southeast Asian countries, excluding Singapore. Before joining Southeast Asia Client Business Team, she was a member of BlackRock Taiwan Client Business Team, where she was responsible for developing relationships with the intermediary clients in Taiwan including banks, platforms, and insurance companies. Hello, Tarina. The floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me today. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here with you. I'm Tarina from BlackRock. So today, we will be sharing our thoughts on why uh, invest globally. And then we'll share our view uh, on the latest global market and how investors should react during periods of market volatility. Why should invest, investors invest globally? So why do people look abroad? We see there are three key reasons or benefits. Number one is to access global growth. And then number two is to enhance diversification. Number three is to achieve better risk adjusted return, meaning better return and lower volatility. I'll go into details on each point later. When it comes to investing, many people prefer 
uh, to keep their savings in cash or buy domestic stocks or bonds. So this is what we call a national bias or home bias. It is actually not uncommon because after all, you're more likely to be familiar with companies uh, that are based locally compared to those overseas. You hear uh, the local companies on the news, you use their goods or services. However, this may seem like a, a very safe bet, but by always favoring local investment, uh, we think you may be limiting yourself from opportunities as well as returns. So in fact, this is in stark contrast uh, to the way sophisticated or professional investors invest. If I can bring your attention to the next slide, this slide here shows the global market GDP. The round circle represents shares of global GDP. So the larger the circle is, the better the share of global GDP is. The yellow circle uh, represents uh, developed markets, and then the red represents emerging market. Here, looking at the big picture, you have to recognize that the rest of the world is taking a bigger share of the global economy. So in fact, uh, for example, the Philippines uh, represents less than 1% of global GDP. And even for the world's largest economy like US, even the US, it represents only 15% of global GDP. And other 99% or other 85%, you know, we believe the rest abounds with ocean of opportunity. If we move on to the next slide, similarly, if you look at the, the slide here, if you look at global market cap, uh, if you just focus on one single country, you're really missing out a lot of uh, other opportunities. Many of the companies that are listed in developed market or some in emerging markets, they are large, uh, they are multinational businesses, which often generate most of their sales abroad. So by investing globally, you can access growth and opportunities of around the world. Secondly, uh, if I move on to the next slide, uh, investing globally uh, helps provide greater diversification. It helps you uh, to distribute the investment risk across markets, sectors, and global companies. So here, if I can draw attention to this slide, you know, when it comes to investing, you have to recognize that markets go up and down, and there's no one single winner that wins all the time performance of different asset classes or different regions, it varies over time. Sometimes uh, when it's raining in Mexico, the sun is coming out in Germany. So if your money is spread around the world, uh, if the performance of one country stock or bond goes down, uh, it lessens the impact in your in on your investment. Moreover, by looking beyond your home country, uh, we believe you can gain exposure to sectors we, which uh, may be underrepresented uh, locally. Uh, take an ex example, uh, in, in the Philippines. Indeed, there are a lot of great companies. But if you look at the index, the market is heavily weighted towards industrial, real estate, and financials. So there are certain economic sectors uh, that can be underrepresented uh, in the Philippines. Uh, for instance, most of the, the largest technology names, uh, the most innovative one, as you may know, they are in the U.S. Uh, while Japan uh, it is home to many companies that are at the forefront of high technology manufacturing. So when shares go down in a certain sector, um, it can impact your return very dramatically. Therefore, investing globally uh, can help provide a better balance of sectors, uh, which further help with diversification. If I can move on to the next slide here. So the third point, investing globally can help you achieve better risk-adjusted return. So if you look at the slide here, Philippines uh, has performed very well in the last couple of months. However, uh, if we look at longer uh, term performance, meaning three year, five year, so if, if, if you look at the chart on the top, 
um, historically, global markets provided a, a better return. At the same time, if we look at volatility, so on the bottom chart, uh, if you only focus on single country, the volatility uh, or the risk of single country is higher compared to global markets. And then on the right-hand side uh, of the table, in terms of sharp ratio, uh, which means uh, the risk-adjusted return, the number here, the higher it is, the better. So as you can see, global markets historically uh, also delivered a more compelling risk-adjusted return. Moving on to the next slide, investing globally uh, requires expertise because it's not possible for you to do uh, analysis uh, of all the stocks and bonds around the world. So at BlackRock, uh, our global footprint uh, gives us a, a great advantage when it comes to you know, looking for some of the most rewarding investment ideas in the world, no matter where they are located. Our global allocation team, uh, it is a highly experienced team and a well-resourced uh, investment team. So this team has uh, a very seasoned professional managers. Uh, they are backed by a lot of dedicated investment professionals who are doing this who are looking at stocks and bonds as their day-to-day -day job around the world. So in addition uh, to the investment capability, our investment professionals, uh, they can also leverage uh, the breadth and scale of BlackRock. Uh, BlackRock, we are the largest asset manager in the world, and we have extensive resources uh, to build a global strategy uh, that is able to weather both bull and bear markets. Moving on to the next slide. So to build an efficient global portfolio, uh, it is important to have a flexible and, and broad investment universe uh, because you, you want to adapt uh, as market changes. We are unconstrained. Um, you know, we have a lot of tools uh, which allow us to find the best asset class, uh, to find the best sectors, and even currency uh, according to the latest a current a market environment. If I can jump on to the next slide, um, investing globally gives you opportunity to benefit from some of the, the most powerful and exciting investment themes. So for example, technology. Technology uh, is driving uh, exponential progress in the tech sector and, and far beyond. So within technologies, uh, for example, uh, we like software, cybersecurity, we look into media and cable. These are all what you can find uh, in the sector. At the same time, demographics and social change uh, are shaping the future. So longer lifespans and modern lifestyle of human beings will change the way consumers behave. So with that, you know, we look into opportunities within healthcare providers uh, and innovation. And then lastly, uh, on rapid urbanization. So as cities grow large, they require significant infrastructure or transportation. So rapid urbanization is also another key theme that we think you know, it will drive strong uh, investment returns over the longer run. Uh, things like housing or automobile are where we see uh, opportunities in. So all in all, uh, investing globally allows you to find stocks that are favorably positioned to the most rewarding themes um, and allows you to build portfolios that offer exposure to them, uh, which might not be easy uh, to, to be found in local investments. Moving on to the next section, um, you know, I've spoken on why it makes sense to uh, invest globally. Um, uh, on this section, you know, I would like to turn the lens to our, our latest global outlook. So 2022 so far, uh, it has been a tricky environment to navigate. Certainly in the global market, there has been no shortage of eye-popping uh, market movements uh, to, to start the year. The first few weeks uh, of this year, people were concerned on a more hawkish Federal Reserve. And then just as investors are uh, starting to settle with uh, U.S. Fed's 
more hawkish position, the geopolitic uh, conflict between Russia and, and Ukraine has forced everybody to reassess everything. So that I can move on to the next slide. Uh, if you look at the chart here, it shows the performance of different investments uh, year to date. As you can see, there were very few places for investors to hide in. Things like energy and commodities, uh, gold, oil, were among the few that saw positive returns. However, at BlackRock, uh, we continue to hold a positive view on risk assets, meaning we think there's still opportunity to make money uh, by investing in stocks and credit. You know, while uh, uh, the Russia and Ukraine situation remains very fluid, we can kind of gain some clues by looking at past uh, uh, geopolitical events. So historically, these events show that the reaction of uh, asset prices, you know, to such event tends to be very sharp or short lived. We shouldn't neglect uh, the risk of further deterioration in, in Ukraine situation. However, you know, uh, we don't say this with a light heart, but in the long run, uh, this is unlikely uh, to be uh, the only market driver. Another reason we are on the positive side is that we entered this period of weakness uh, in a reasonably strong position economically. Moving on to the next slide. U.S. consumer remains a powerful force. So in 2020, during the on and off lockdown, not only uh, the consumer, uh, they are not able to spend money as usual, they saw a considerable boost to their income. So those money that were received through stimulus checks, government benefits, or pandemic assistance, so, so all those from the government. Consumer spending represents a significant part of U.S. GDP. Therefore, we believe it will continue to be a key driver in the U.S. This is the same for corporates. So companies' fundamentals, uh, we're seeing they're still robust. Uh, companies' earnings growth uh, continue to be very strong uh, for the latest uh, earnings season. Moving on to the next slide, uh, I would like to move on to uh, central banks. So uh, last week, the, the U.S. Central Bank said as expected, they kicked off its hiking cycle. So it raised uh, a key interest rate by 25 basis points. And then they uh, expect further rises this year. So to explain this a bit more, uh, what we have learned from the textbook or the history is that interest rate represents the cost of borrowing, the cost of money. So if we are seeing stronger growth and higher inflation, or in the other wor uh, words, when price in goods and services are going too high, uh, what central bank will do is they will raise interest rates to a higher level. So BlackRock, um, our base case is that compared to the past, central bank will be more cautious in their response uh, to inflationary conditions. So they will not raise rates as aggressively. Even though uh, the latest tone from the Fed they sound uh, more hawkish. They're projecting a large and rapid increase in rates. Our view is that it will be quite difficult to do that uh, because in order uh, for them to maintain growth and jobs, the central bank, they will need to learn to live with uh, inflation. They will need to uh, be a bit more tolerant uh, of inflation. So what does this mean for investors? If I can move on to the next slide, uh, as you probably can feel it as a consumer, uh, the war uh, in, in Ukraine has caused a spike in energy prices. Therefore, we see the effect of this conflict for the global economy comes in the form of higher commodity prices, which leads to higher inflation. Higher inflation is not only a concern and source of volatility, it may also mean uh, persistently negative real rates, uh, which makes us prefer stocks compared to bonds. This is in combination uh, with strong growth that I just talked about, healthy consumer, and then also after the sell-off this year, the valuations are very reasonable now. 
so we think it creates more opportunities in stocks. First bonds, uh, we think traditional bonds, they are expected to generate <laughs> negative real yield. Uh, so over the medium term, if you consider uh, inflation, bonds will not give you positive yield. We don't like things uh, like nominal government bonds, so things like U.S. Treasuries or European government bonds, because we think their ability to act as a uh, portfolio balance is just not there anymore. In the past, these are what we call risk-free assets, but because U.S. government, they will very likely uh, pay you back, you know, uh, it's almost guaranteed. But ironically, uh, with inflation, these risk-free assets are in fact a bit risky uh, when you sit in just those asset classes. As we ex expect a volatility to remain elevated, uh, we think being diversified, uh, find an experienced, uh, experienced investment team, uh, being very unconstrained and dynamic uh, it's very important in the current, uh, the current market environment. So lastly, during market uncertainty, uh, I wanted to share a few important themes uh, for you to remember. If I can move on to the next slide. So uh, on the next slide, it shows that downside protection is important. So the best offense is good defense. What do I mean by that? If you look at this slide, a 30% loss uh, of investment requires a 43% gain to recover. And then a 50% loss requires 100% gain to recover. So remember, the bigger the loss, uh, the more you need to recoup to, to go back to even. Therefore, finding a solution that emphasizes on protecting the downside and at the same time gives you some upside uh, is very important. And then if I can move on to the next slide, this is my last slide here. Uh, we think uh, it is important to spend time in the market, not timing the market. It is easier said than done, we understand, uh, but managing uh, an investment um, for for the the long term, you know, it's really uh, a test of your your willpower. Usually, uh, your emotions and instincts will will urge you to react to short term news, or urge you, you to react, you know, something you see on Bloomberg, uh, even though uh, your investment goals might be far away. So we think it is very important to avoid overreacting to volatility. When volatility persists. Everybody wants to find that rebound moment. But no matter how much information you have, even us at BlackRock, we are professional investors, we recognize it is virtually uh, impossible and very, very difficult to predict for any length of time, you know, exactly when the market will rise, when it will fall. So we did an analysis over the last 20 years. If you miss just a few of the best days, uh, it can have a massive impact on, on your investment. As you can see on this, this chart, if you miss just 10 days of the best performing days, you lost half of the return uh, compared to staying invested. So among the best way of planning for an uncertain future is to stick to a long-term strategy, uh, be flexible, protect your downside, and, and stay invested. So hopefully uh, that was helpful. Um, I'll pause here and pass it back to the host. Thank you. Hi, so thank you again for that. A lot of people here in the Philippines may be new to global investing. It can get daunting to decide whether to invest, especially when you don't understand the global markets. And most Filipinos do not like taking a lot of risk. With Atram Global Allocation Feeder Fund, you get a global multi-asset fund that invests across the full spectrum of global assets available providing you the growth of the global economy with less risk. The fund invests into BlackRock's flagship multi-asset fund, the Global Allocation Fund. And as I will show, they have committed their best resources into this fund. The fund's goal is to give you competitive returns to global stocks with one-third less the risk. 
The fund has overall been able to closely meet the returns of global stocks historically on average per year with one third less the risk. It also has historically provided more of the upside of global stocks compared to the downside. As mentioned by Tarina earlier, BlackRock has poured their best resources into the fund, acting like BlackRock's think tank. The fund acts like your personal global portfolio manager with an average allocation of 60% to equities and 40% to fixed income. This is perfect for the moderately aggressive investor, someone who is willing to withstand short to medium term volatility for possible gains in the medium to long term. The fund is also perfect for those who are in their 40s as only 40% is in fixed income. Allowing for more growth. If you're younger, you could possibly add to other riskier global assets, but if you're older, you could possibly add to more conservative global assets. The fund is also for those who are aiming to grow their money, but with less risk. So Atrum has a wide range of investment products and our capabilities span across several asset classes meant to service the different investment objectives of each individual. And with these, it is with great pride that we announce that Atrum has recently won Best Investment Solutions Provider Philippines 2022 from International Business Magazine Award and World Business Outlook Awards. For today's session, we hope to have somehow assisted you to hashtag take on tomorrow by investing your hard-earned money with an award-winning fund house. So at this point, we would like to move on to the live questions from our audience. So we have several questions coming in. <clears throat> so first, um, for Trina, what's your advice to people on how to know whether they are ready for investing globally? Hi, Kayla. Um, thanks for the, the questions. I, I think, you know, it's very important um, for investors to think about um, because investing is all about reducing risk uh, while maximizing uh, your return. So one of the best way to achieve this goal um, is through geopolitical uh, uh, diversification. So, so with diversification, you have a better chance of uh, enhancing your returns. So as I've shared, um, I think key reason for people to uh, look globally uh, ex is to access global growth and then to enhance diversification, uh, at the same time get better risk adjusted return. So how do you know if you're ready? Um, I think um, you know, this might be something that you are not familiar with, with. So I think you would need to ask yourself, are you willing uh, to take the risk of global investments? Um, I think investments, they still come with risk. So you have to know there's a possibility uh, to experience losses due to change in global markets, or due to fluctuations in, in currencies. So you, you definitely have to recognize that. And then um, ask yourself if you are a long-term invest, uh, invest, uh, investor. So I think uh, it's very important to keep uh, a long-term investment horizon. So when we talk about long-term, we think about one, three, five years. You know, we don't tend to react to things that happen in the short run. Um, and then as you start this journey, you have to, uh, you know, be either educating yourself more on global markets or engage a professional. So for beginners, uh, speak to a financial advisor or investing through a professional uh, as a manager is very important. Because when it comes to uh, other countries, there can be nuances. Uh, or, or policies that, that, you know, I think people wouldn't normally, normally know. And additionally, finding solutions that are uh, global, that are diversified, uh, that are designed to be core uh, is very important because I think as a start, you don't want to take a specific asset or region or even country risk. Um, and then as an a individual investor, as a starting point, uh, you can start with something like 10 to 20 percent of your investment uh, exposure, and then uh, once you learn uh, the ropes of investing globally, uh, you can look at increasing your exposure. So hopefully, uh, that was helpful. Thank you. So I guess um, to to benefit from investing globally, you also have to recognize that there are risks involved, and that you also have to know your time horizon when you're investing. And you have to also make sure you have a reliable research or advisor, just like Adram and BlackRock. So for the next question, in relation to global markets, how does the geopolitical conflict between Russia and Ukraine affect Europe or possibly involve other countries like China? 
Yeah, so I think together, Russia and Ukraine, they only account for 3% of uh, the global output. So therefore, you know, supposedly or theoretically, uh, the overall impact on global economy uh, is, it shouldn't be that significant. However, um, I've mentioned this earlier, that both countries, they are large exporters of commodities. So Russia, they are the world's uh, third largest energy producer and the EU's uh, largest supplier of, of gas and oil. So the main effect is really, you know, higher commodity prices and higher inflation. Um, so we think uh, uh, regional-wise, uh, Europe compared to the U.S., we think in our view, U.S. is in a better spot uh, in, in this situation. Um, and then we also, you know, we briefly talk about U.S. and Europe. I haven't touched uh, on China. So China, interestingly, being, uh, in the past, it has a, a strategic political alliance with Russia. Reason being both countries, they have uh, kind of the mutual opposition to the Western-led world. However, what we have seen uh, since this, this war is that there are some limitations to that uh, uh, alliance. So in the beginning, China's stance was viewed as uh, a bit more lukewarm. But then, you know, I think now the government had, uh, they came out, they have clarified and, and make it very clear and known that, you know, China is committed to uh, an independent foreign policy of peace. So we think uh, in our view, China will be uh, remain more neutral uh, in this situation to maintain uh, its stability. So thank you for that. I guess for what's happening now in Russia and Ukraine, um, the trade impact is, is limited, but the biggest impact we will feel globally is really on um, the rise in commodity prices. But we must know also that um, this conflict hopefully will end um, what, one or another, and that when we're investing, we have to think more long term. So another question we have now is, how should I position my portfolio for 2022? Yes, yeah, so um, at BlackRock, our uh, latest global outlook in 2022 is still, you know, we stay underweight bonds. We like stocks, we like equities uh, because of the inflationary backdrop that we discussed. So, you know, rising inflation uh, has kept real or inflation adjusted uh, yields, you know, it, it, it's keeping it very low, even though, you know, nominal yields have kind of go up. But we think, you know, after you consider inflation, uh, the, not, uh, the real yield is, is still very low. And so under this environment, we like stocks. And then in developed market, uh, the corporate earnings is still very strong. And the U.S. consumer is strong. Uh, corporate uh, fundamentals are strong. So I think that's why we, we still like um, um, equities and preferring, you know, tilting towards the U.S. Uh, in terms of short term, I guess, uh, sector outlook, we advocate um, Barbo approach. So, you know, you can pair cyclical value exposure to things like energy and financials uh, with long-term structural growers. So, you know, we think like tech and healthcare are not uh, a, a story that you think about in the next quarter. It's a long-term theme. Um, and, you know, why we think it makes sense to balance quality and, 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 and cyclical is because, you know, we think you always have to think about long term and cyclical growth can, can help you of, um, position in, in the current environment. And with the, the market uncertainty, I think we are turning a bit more discerning. Um, that, that, that's true. But we think, you know, if you want to look into uh, stocks, the quality of the company is, is very important and, and whether the company can um, it has the pricing power, uh, um, you know, to pass on uh, the, the higher cost uh, to, to consumers. So companies that have strong fundamentals, uh, it has earning consistency, uh, good pricing power is what we like. Thank you for that. So really, we must focus on quality companies. So um, how does BlackRock select countries or other companies to invest in also? So I think uh, in terms of countries, uh, um, we, we like developed markets. So U.S., uh, Europe, I think this quarter we have toned down our preference. Um, and then I think uh, in terms of countries, 
China, we think of it as a separate uh, a strategic allocation. So you think, you know, in the last two years, there's been a lot of discussion whether you should look into China, whether China is important. But I think uh, the fact is most investors, they are still um, underinvested in China. And, and I think if um, the, with the deglobalization of, of um, you know, the, the current market and current world, um, as an investor, it's nice because you don't have to pick a side. So, you know, uh, we think, uh, uh, you know, picking U.S. Uh, on, on, on one hand and then, you know, picking emerging market, uh, China, on the other hand, um, you know, that's something that you can consider in, in the portfolio. Great, thank you for that. I guess also... Um, for the people watching today, that's why um, we're here, so we can help you and decide for you. And we will do all the research um, for you. So uh, that burden of figure out which countries or which companies to invest in, BlackRock and Adram will be there to help. So another question is, what are asset classes that are good bets in a rising rate environment and geopolitical risk? Will fixed income investors be challenged this year? Yes, so our view is uh, fixed income bonds, uh, you know, they won't be uh, as good of a balance compared to uh, the, the past. And then again, because uh, of inflation, uh, um, bonds, the, the yield, it has to be very high. So actually, I think in BlackRock, our house view is uh, within, with, within uh, credit or within uh, fixed income, we like only uh, bonds in, in Asia, especially China, China bond. Uh, that's something... Uh, we, we like and, and and again, I think um, it, our overarching view is uh, there's still better opportunities in stock uh, compared to uh, bonds. Okay, then another question is: What are the best funds to invest in now, despite the global crisis prevalent today? So, um, aside from the allocation uh, feeder fund, we also have the global financial speeder fund, which would benefit um, the rising interest rate environment because this would be a source of income for um, the finance industry like banks. And they're all, there's, um, within the finance um, spectrum as well, it's also invested in consumer finance and uh, fintech as well. And as we know, when we've experienced um, this pandemic, um, looking beyond the what's happening in the fintech now, um, we've started to use a lot of transactions online and that's what um, this fund is also invested in now. Now, if you're an investor also that's more wary about um, all the volatility and want more stability, another good fund would be Atrium Global Dividend Feeder Fund. So, um, but also remember, we have a lot of funds and you can check it out on our website. And you also have to remember as an investor, whether um, you're looking to do it for short term or long term, but all, always know that um, it, it would be best to have more of a long term view and um, just to stay invested. This is what Dorina said. So another question for Dorina is, with the derail of globalization, mostly on supply chain concerns and geopolitical uncertainty. Is there a benefit of investing globally versus investing in particular region until the clouds will clear? Yeah, so I think that goes back to the you know, argument we think uh, at the start, it's really best to start with a global portfolio uh, and an engaged professional uh, like Atrum, you know, to help you think about how you should allocate because I think ultimately, you know, specific country risk um, uh, is very high and, and specific region risk is, is also high. So uh, I think relying on uh, professional asset managers to help you look into the global market, to help you look into uh, the, the, the policies, the central banks, um, and, and, you know, I think, and I think that's very helpful uh, as opposed to uh, picking a specific uh, region uh, to, to look into. Thank you for that. Now we also have a question here. How can I start with allocation feeder fund and how much is the minimum initial investment for this fund? So you can invest in the Atrium Global Allocation Feeder Fund for as low as 1,000 pesos at www.seedbox.ph. For your information about the fund, please visit our website. Now I think that's all the time we have now for questions. Before we wrap up, any last words, Serena? Thanks, Kayla. I think, um, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket is equally a good risk management advice. 
uh, for grocery shopping uh, and, and investing. So, you know, not every asset class will be um, increasing or decreasing at the same time. So in, investing across a, a very wide variety of, of assets is, is very important and should help you uh, through smooth your uh, in the investment journey, especially in uh, uncertain times. Okay, so once again, thank you, Tarina. And of course, thank you to our audience. We appreciate you for taking the time to join us today. And we hope you were able to gain insights and key takeaways from today's webinar. Now, did you know that for as low as 1,000 pesos, you can start, you already jumpstart your investment journey? Here's how you can invest in Atram funds. Hello. To open an account with Atram, just visit our website at www.atram.com.ph. Here, you can learn more about all the funds and services that we offer. Our site will then guide you to our online investment platform, Seedbox, where you can start investing for just 1,000 pesos. But if you have more questions, visit the website's Frequently Asked Questions page or Atrum Academy page. Thank you. Okay, so there you go. If you have any further questions or would like to er learn more about Atram, please visit our website, www.atram.com.ph. So investors are driven by emotions and biases while investing in different classes of investment sectors, which oftentimes lead to lapses in sound decision-making, Join J.P. Morgan Asset Management's Executive Director, Sikrit Ban, as he is set to tackle key bias biases in detail and explain what investors should be aware of. To avoid falling into the emotional trap, in case you have not registered yet, you may do so by scanning the QR code, or you may also type in the link flashed on your screen. Again, if you have any friends who you think would like this webinar but are unable to attend, feel free to share your youth share the YouTube replay of this session. Visit our YouTube channel, Atram Studio. Scan the QR code to visit our official social media pages. We would also like to invite you to join Atram's official Viber community group, hashtag AtramPHCommunity. Stay updated on the latest announcements, advisories, and reminders. Scan the QR code or visit the link found on your screen and get a chance to win Atram merchandise. Now lastly, please answer the survey at the end of this webinar. We would love to know your thoughts on today's topic. And on behalf of everyone at Atram, thank you again for your attendance and participation. We wish you and your loved ones continued health and safety. Have a great day.